What's poppin' y'all? It's your man Doctrine. Jack Mac. And you tuned in to do it with them. Man, I can drop an expose and make you tweet. I'll make you tweet. No good critiques, cause I can kill you in your sleep. Blah. Not talking murder, talking about a side of dreams. Yeah. Cause I occupy your headspace. Gonna get your mind in a head race. And I see you in the What's good, do over don't? We're here with Purple World episode four. Bruh. It's been a while. We took a little hiatus. You'll see as of our post of yesterday, we're back in action, but we're back with Doctrine. We're here with Jack Mac, and we got Mr. PA here, who's going to be a new co-host on this. Um, I'm not going to really explain our hiatus. You could look at our Instagram if you want to see that. But Doctrine, Jack Mac, what's good? What's, what's poppin', man? What's going on? It's good. You yeah. re-engaged, bro. Re-engaged. Re-engaged. Oh. It's been a while. Actually, it, yeah, no, it's been a while since you've been on our channel. Yeah. Now that I think about it, like February, like a year ago. Yeah. A year ago. At the minimum. I know. And the first, last time we did like an interview type thing. Well, we did an interview that time, but I, I fell asleep during it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that when we talk about LA, but it's been a while since we fucking did an interview crazy with you. So, experience regardless. We'll catch up with you real quick. How's everything been with you? I mean, it's been, all right, I'm, I'll say that it's been, it's been blessed first and foremost because regardless of, any experience that I give or any like story I'm telling or anything that goes about, it's more so, you know, just me relaying my experience as opposed to like ever complaining about it. You feel what I mean? Uh. And it's everything I always take as a blessing because regardless in, in good or bad, like I'm sitting here right now, we in the same room with good vibes. We on this podcast, like regardless of whatever struggle led up to this moment, like I'm here. You feel what I mean? Uh. So it's all just like a, a relaying of stuff. But, you know, in brief, honestly, you know, I went to Los Angeles, uh, obviously from Massachusetts. And, you know, obviously, as you've seen on your channel um, and through the songs and the album, the um, the second uh, D.O.D. album, um, you know, like we did some content while I was in L.A. But yeah. besides that and outside of that, I hadn't actually done a whole lot more because... I haven't told nobody like publicly besides like the people that are close to me like and the people who know like it's somewhat common knowledge but like as an artist part of like the struggle story is my car it got stolen when I was in LA. I was gonna bring that up in particular. Yeah. So and to kind of give like context do you feel what I mean? I was using the car me and my girlfriend shout out to Lizzie um we were using the car to do like Instacart and DoorDash to be able to make our money to, you know, pay rent, food, whatever the case may be. And living in Los Angeles, now it's astronomical, but the gas was still very expensive, yeah. the highest in the country. You feel what I mean? It's not a cheap place to live whatsoever. Not, not at all. Not even the go-to for a fucking week, never mind <clears throat> living. And then this is, you know, we, we're two uh, 19-year-old... Um, Young people, young adults, you know, chasing something in L.A. And the unforeseen occurrence of losing our only means of income, you know, at a time when it was so crucial. And things were getting so, you know what I'm saying? Like gas prices going up, th inflation going up, COVID messing everything up, made th make, uh, excuse me, makes things impossible to be able to, like, navigate through a landscape like that. Uh. So... Long story short, through loans and tribulations and stuff, we got ourselves in a whole lot of, like, unideal situations, you know what I'm saying, which ultimately led us to Texas, me and my shorty to Texas, um, because it's less expensive over there. We were able to rent, like, rental cars over there, which we could use for Instacart and DoorDash, and I've explained it to a few people, like I said, that are close to me for the last thing, but... The way that my days were set up in Texas, which, again, this is never me complaining, but, like, just matter-of-factly, like, no exaggerations. Every day where I was staying, whether it was, like, a, an Airbnb or a hotel, every day I needed to have enough, I needed to make enough money on Instacart and DoorDash to be able to pay for the hotel for that day and the rental car so I can make that money the next day to do the same thing. Jesus you feel what Christ, I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, if I don't make enough money for the hotel, then I don't have the place to stay. 
And if I don't, if I make enough money for the hotel, but I don't make enough money for the rental car, then I don't have the rental car to make money for the next day. So it put us in a situation where literally it's like a constant state of stress, constant state of like having to go through it. And I'm not like, not even to get too crazy into the details, but like, like we talking like eating, like instead of talking like a thousand calories, 2000 calories a day, we talking like a thousand, 2000 calories a week. You feel what I mean? Between me and my shorty. So like, it's, it's the type of situation where like, if you don't have the willpower, you're going to be going home crying to mommy and daddy, or you going to be homeless. You feel what I'm saying? And I look around me, you know what I'm saying? And I respect everybody because I wouldn't want anyone else to be in a situation where they're struggling, right? Obviously, I wouldn't wish that on nobody. If anything, I want people to be on the opposite end of the spectrum. I would be willing to say that nobody that at least I personally know or most of the people that I look at in my circle even let alone they still live with like family when that that's one thing like i look at how many people have like apartments on their own and i I, obviously i commend the people who do but to the people who don't from the outside looking in like sometimes that may be like even something like moving out to get an apartment they know that's an adult move but they don't understand what goes into it if you're not on point now take an apartment while maintaining a long-term relationship an extremely faithful relationship. Like I'm not a dog. Like I'm I'm extremely like when it comes to that type of thing, I take that very seriously. So I'm gonna give 110% to the relationship, just like it's myself. You know what I'm saying? So basically, maintaining two lives and going out of state, doing the music 100% by myself. You know what I mean? Obviously, with help along the way from people. You know what I mean? But still, at the end of the day, alone. I originally went out to Los Angeles with my older brother. And then through situations, one thing leading to another, I ended up being there by myself. He ended up going back to Massachusetts. So I really was like, like when you think about like being alone, like in Massachusetts on your own, like that's crazy. But I was on the complete other side of the country, standing outside, you know what I'm saying? In Crenshaw, in Los Angeles. And I'm like, yo, like I'm literally like by myself, like this city could like swallow me up. You feel what I'm saying? There's so much debauchery going on, so much fraudulence, so much violence, so much crime, so much drug use, homelessness, anything could swallow me up. I got to navigate this properly. I'm 19 years old. You feel what I'm saying? Like that's, that's a territory that's, that's, that's kind of difficult to step in. So with that being said, going to Texas and whatnot, it just was that kind of constant staying on the line of like barely surviving. And, you know, through circumstances that ended up working and I don't know whether to thank the universe, whether to thank God, whether to thank myself, but things allowed me to come back to Massachusetts in a way that was on, you know, good terms with myself physically and mentally. I wasn't coming back to a place that I didn't want to necessarily. I was ready to come back for the time. I was ready to reconnect. You feel what I'm saying? I was ready to re-engage with my city because I missed the city. You know what I'm saying? And I know for a fact that the people who were fucking with me, who are fucking with me with the music and what I stand for and what I'm going to continue to stand for going forward, I know for a fact that they'd be happy that, you know, I would be back around to give everyone content and to try to further my, my message and whatnot. So too long didn't read. I struggled. But now, you know what I'm saying? It got me more focused than ever. I'm more thankful than ever. And now I'm in the position, like I said, I'm blessed to be in this, po- even to be on this podcast in Massachusetts, back in, you know, the place that I grew up. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm it, it just taught me to be fucking endlessly thankful for everything I have, every meal, every friend, every moment inside, not sleeping in a whip, every time being in a warm place, being able to take a shower, all of that, doing laundry, those are the things, like, every single day, like, I don't just, like, appreciate it, like, that makes my day, like, I don't need nothing else, I could be by myself every day, you know what I'm saying, and as long as I have my essentials, because I've seen the other end of the spectrum, most people are not seeing that at my age, no matter, I know people go through struggles, but you, you ask people, it's like, it's not the same thing, I'm not comparing nothing, but it's like, people wouldn't be able to be like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. I, I was in LA, too, and homeless and doing it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I kept myself above ground alongside my shorty. And, you know, it's even crazier. I even rescued, when I was in LA, I rescued a stray cat. And I'm still holding down that cat. And that's that's my boy. His name is Crispy. 
He's his full name is Crispy Cinnamon Basketball. <laughs> Rescued him from the streets of LA. I'm telling you, cutest cat possible. Made me like fall in love with animals, and it's just like that's another thing. So like on top of all of that, I'm still maintaining like a whole another like life type thing. Like, yeah. it, you know that that's really the type of person I am. Like just a soldier helping not just myself but other people around me. Bro. Hearing everything you just said, because obviously I know everything off camera, but like the whole time I was sitting there, I was just re-listening to your story. But I'm just sitting here, I'm like, bro, I don't know how this motherfucker remains so positive. No matter what, bro. Because if if I went through all that shit you just talked about, I'd probably be walking around like just hungry for everything, but just like wanting to rip everyone's face off with all the anger. Like, obviously it's not like... I know what you mean for sure. It's just like... It astonishes me how you're so fucking positive all the time going through all that. Even just the way you talked about it, it wasn't like, I could obviously tell you went through shit, but it's not like you seem like painful about it. It's like you're like happy it happened. Almost. Absolutely. Like, 100%, my man. And I appreciate you for sharing something that personal on the podcast. Of honestly, course, man. I didn't think you were going to get that deep into it. I haven't, you know, honestly, I feel like it's n- not that it's all about me either. It's just that. I think to give that, because I haven't said nothing to nobody. I haven't spoken out yeah. in like a year. I was going to say, your fans like, yeah, I haven't heard a lot. So, I, and I think just for the, even the conversation of like who's in the room, I think it's just like, you, you may not have known. You may not have known that. To, that I'm sure yeah. there's even details Did that, that you didn't, didn't even know. 100% yeah, know. No. So it's like, this is like real scoop. Like, you know what I mean? Literally. Goes hand in hand with what the motivation is. And about being, about being positive, it's just like, you know, not going to get philosophical on that piece necessarily, but just just the fact that I went through those things and that I'm alive right now. Yeah, that's what I have that wisdom and that knowledge. So instead of I could be grim, but now the plan is to like now I have the position and the, the like the wisdom and the experience to be able to help somebody else from not stepping into that same thing, because I authentically believe that. I am not like on this planet or on this earth at all for my own self. I 100% believe my purpose is for everybody else. And that's like 100% what I try to live to. And I think my experiences are just refine me to be so, like, I don't like, I don't care how battered and bruised I get. Like, I'm not going to give up because I know I'm going to come out the other side being able to help other people with the shit that I went through. So it's just like, it's not like I don't want to say like it's a like a sacrifice in the sense of like my the whole scape of my life, but I'm willing to sacrifice the hard times and stay positive and have faith than to, you know, let myself succumb to it, knowing that I can do something for other people because yeah. it's not about me at all. Bro. Such a positive man and always wanting to help people <laughs> like dead ass. <laughs> it sounds like guy. no, like I'm dead <laughs> ass, bro. Straight up. Like. I just want to add, like, I talked to him right in the thick of it, like, right after the car incident in L.A., like, on FaceTime, and, like, if he didn't say anything, I wouldn't have even, like, known that he was struggling, like, pure Um, positive energy, just always. That's the thing. Every time I talk to you, except there was one time when I was, when you were in Texas, when I talked to you, where I could hear it in your voice. There was one time, but besides that, like, every time I talk to you, bro, I would have no idea anything's going on, because you were just so positive, upbeat, like, just loving life. Even in L.A., when... In Texas, when I was struggling, you were still, like, so happy to not be here and be able to, like, live by yourself, even with all the struggles, like, yeah. you were so proud How of long it. were you in L.A.? I was in L.A. for about a year, and so you, then I went to Texas for about six months, four months, five months. So when did you move out of Mass? Um, How old were you? Uh, I was <coughs> 18, August 24th or something, August 24th, 2020, so... Yeah, I was 18. So you, you had just graduated high school? Yeah, I, and I, I, I moved out of my parents' house when I was 17. I, you go, if you look up right now, on anybody, <laughs> it's embarrassing, but it's funny now to me. If you look up, like, because, like, I, like, born and raised in Holbrook, Mass., you know. Um, so if you look up missing Holbrook teen on Google... Like my picture will pop up because like I left my yeah. I left my crib at seventeen and my parents like put me on blast on the news and stuff. But like people don't really like like I really like left like and when I was seventeen, like I just started living my life by myself since I was seventeen years old. And then yeah. as soon as I graduated high school, literally I graduated in, in June 
because of COVID. And then like the end of June and then a couple weeks into August, I was out. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Damn. Damn. You yeah, nice. you moving nice. fast nice. as fuck, bro. What yeah, the fuck? Facts. God damn. damn. God damn. Before we get into other shit, though, before we, like, stop talking about L.A., mm. I want to talk about when we linked in L.A. For sure. Like, because obviously we chilled back fucking, bro, you know what I just realized? That exotic snacks video is edited. I have no idea why. I'm going to find that, and you guys are going to get that. Yeah, there's we a need video. That. There's a video of all all of us just drunk and high as shit at like three in the morning in LA. Doctrine got a fuck ton of exotic snacks. Yes. And that's all I'm gonna say. Hopefully I find that vlog because I know Ken edited it. That's gotta be dropped. Yeah. Ken has it. I hope his hard drive didn't break. I feel like his hard drive might have broken. That's why it didn't go up. But we'll see. Ken edited that. That was funny as fuck. Mr. Hot. Mr. Dude, the fucking Chinese yeah. or the Asian dude on the bus. Bro, those, those chips were so bomb. I think it was like, a Chinese market. It was. <laughs> no, it was. It was. They were all um, Chinese and Japanese snacks, I think. That's I think dope. they were. Um, uh, yeah. But talking about Nightbird, I got to hit my favorite studio ever with you, yes. which that shit was a blessing how we ended up getting that room. But what was it like being in that studio with us, obviously, and fucking having Split Mind, because we got to meet Split Mind, got to meet Link. Am, am I tripping, or was that, like, like Nightbird? They had, like, plaques on the wall they for, had like, like, bro, the like, biggest tracks, like... All of the lights. No. Nope. Kanye was recorded in there. Mad shit. Like, in the... All right, so in the moment, I think I was a little bit, like, jaded by, like, being in L.A. Yeah. And, like, kind of, like, what, like still numb to the experience but like retrospectively like looking back like that's to be able to be in in that in the best room right yeah in the best no, that was the best room and then Leroy didn't even they Leroy rented out the B room which was the one we were just in with Gio um Leroy wasn't even in that room for recording his album it, yeah. you know what I'm saying so it's like just to be able to be <clears throat> in a room where that greatness had occurred is just Pretty fucking crazy. Uh, that was fine. I so I mean, that's that's in, being at Niper with y'all and, and you know the rest of DOD that was shit, an, an experience crazy. that I'd never I never forget for sure. That shit was fun as fuck. Shit was crazy. That shit was fun. How much is it? Huh? An hour, like. Oh, uh, so originally the room we were gonna get was like eighty or a hundred an hour, and then the speakers somebody blew out the speakers, so they just the other room the B room was booked out, so we ended up getting the biggest room, which is like. I think they told me it's like 250, 300 an hour. Some shit. Yeah, and and it was for like crazy. all day, right? Yeah. Like Eight hours? We, we were there for like 12, 14 hours. Oh, we were there for that long, yo. We were in that bitch all day. Like it was 3, 3 p.m. Wow. And then we left at like 4.30 a.m. In the presence of greatness, man. Bro, I know. I remember I got home. I had so much footage, bro. I didn't sleep like obviously for mad long. Just cracked open beers and just edited, right? I was yes, like sir. so excited. I was like, this shit was so fun. Like that was, that's one of my music memories that just will forever stick with me. And all the all the off camera night conversations we had out in LA, bro. There was many of them. Like, man. no bullshit. You talking to me? I'm gonna say this for this podcast. This is a staple in here. You motivated me to get the studio so much because a <laughs> lot of people, a lot of people don't know. I was kind of against getting the studio and Doctrine. Me and Doctrine had a long ass conversation in LA, and he just like gave me motivation in myself to get this shit so no no joke bro shout out to you for that. like I, that that ass that ass i've said that to you before i think but. and i'm i'm glad that i like i was on like the correct side yeah no you know what i'm I saying know. Like, I know. we were right you uh, feel me no i fucking appreciate it it was like an, a zero percent so chance of failure man uh Hey, no, there was a there was a percentage no, of failure. There's no, literally none. There was no, no percentage. Like huh? You can't think like I don't think like that. No, no, no. The reason why there was a zero percent chance of failure is did it did it fail? It didn't. It, there's yeah. that. There's literally a zero percent right. chance. You're right. You're <laughs> if right. If it happened, it's a hundred. You're right. You're right about that. For, exactly, man. So my bad. I'm chewing the M M&M, and M. But let me get one. Oh. It's a so, boost. So, how's it feel being back in Mass? Locked in with Jack Mac now. Locked in with Sully, too. Yes, sir. How is it? I'm thankful to be back in Mass to, you know, re reconnect with the people who who I can, like, on my same type of time, you know what I'm saying? The people I can reconnect with, um, my family, you know, uh, some of my family. Um, but 
like like you just said, I'm extremely excited, obviously, to tap back into the music. In between what I got, you know, working with K Sully, which obviously shout out to K Sully. The fucking shout coolest dude, Sully. bro. Yes, fucking the goat. Undisputed. And fucking also the goat, undisputed. My guy, fucking Jack Mac. We got like like right now, what's it's like like three or three four, or four yeah. in the vault right now. And at least one of them is gonna get dropped like ASAP. So and being able to the thing that I fuck with about about Jack Mac is that and this is like not just saying it like I have no reason to kiss up. Like I said, like everything else you see and I've been open and authentic. It's like and this is something I'm very passionate about. So we complex in Weymouth, right? Shout out first and foremost, shout out to Maze Radio. We made some fucking magic there, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to them for setting that up. But at SOE Complex, right? This is an ex- this is this is an experience that I always look back to, right? I recorded over there and the the owner of the studio which honestly, shout out to him, shout out to what he's built up and I respect it. He's a he's a he's like a Christian like artist and he, you know, has like morality behind his stuff. I respect it, right? When I went and recorded there, I was tapping in with Maze Radio and I was recording there, but the dude who I'm talking about, the guy's show, no matter like like if I was recording there, like or I, I would like say something, like, you know, you have conversation with the engineer, like you 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 know, you you work through things. If I'm talking with Jack Mac or I'm sitting with Jack Mac, like I'm probably gonna be sitting right next to him. You feel what I'm saying? Like we gonna be working hand in hand. Like it's not like like he's like on like this different plane. You feel what I'm saying? And it just be on the type of time where it's like 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 am I like beneath you? You feel what I'm yeah. saying? Then that's the feeling. But and I'm only giving that one example because like I have like I got no problem saying that. But there's been many other instances of me working with engineers that I don't even need to name where it's just like, it's like there's an energy gap. It's like, is it because like I'm the artist and they're producing, they feel like it's in their hands. You feel what I'm saying? Like it it just doesn't make sense. And the bigger thing is, is if you are recording with someone bigger than everything else I just said and you don't fuck with my music or you don't rock at all and you're not into it, like why? Like just don't record me. You know what I'm saying? Like. And if I'm trash, then I'm trash. But I know that when I hop in the studio and record some shit that's not trash and you're not rocking with it and you're, you know, being sour with it, I don't want to record with a person like that. I want to record with a person who's going to build me up. And if they don't like it, they're going to be like, yo, maybe you could do this. Not be like, huh, like, yo, like, like, yo, does that sound good? Like, I don't know. Like, like not helping me out and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want you to be engaged in the process type shit and your energy got to be on point. If I feel like you don't fuck with me and you're the producer, my song is in your hands. Yeah. That's like, that's like having like, you know what I'm saying? Imagine putting a valuable possession that you have in someone that don't fuck with you's hands, like in your enemy's hands or something. I'm releasing a song that maybe to other people, it's just drill music or this and this, but I'm making a song that I want to influence the world. And it's in the hands of someone who don't give a fuck what I'm saying. I don't fuck with that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the vibe that I be getting from engineers and producers sometimes. But when we talk about K. Sully and we talk about Jack Mac, Jack Mac was saying this earlier to me. We I never seen uh, like a, a producer like on a type of time like like a like K. Sully and shit. And and shout out to Nick's too. But as a collective DOD and from the communications we've had with K. Sully, it's just people usually don't want to be in a position to put other people on because it's like selfishness. But that's not that's not the type of thing with, with, with Sully. That's not, not the type all. of thing with Jack Mac. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So when, I, when I'm rocking with people like that and I'm tapping in with producers, I'm only going to rock with producers who actually like are on like some sort of energetic thing. Who If they don't like the music, they can just let me know. But it's like if I'm rocking with Jack Mac or I'm rocking with K. Sully, you feel what I'm saying? It's beyond the music. Like I'm... Like it, like the human connections there, and that's yeah. way more important. Like I don't care if it's business is business. Like it's not just business because it's more than, it's more than business. You feel me? I'm not gonna pay to go to a studio that's fire producing equipment if the engineer's a dickhead. Yeah. It don't. That's not gonna happen. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, that's the thing, bro. A lot of people come in here and they're like, bro, like my last studio I went to, or every other studio I went to, the engineers don't give a fuck about me. Blah blah that's blah. That's so important, bro. Like, bro. Everything. Literally. Like, you're the millionth person that said that to me. I've heard that so many times. Producers, for the most part, 
I won't agree with that with producers because what I think with producers a lot of the time, from what I've seen at least, they're a lot more open to work with each other. Like, well, the people that you work with, that's true. have have like good like everyone that y'all are associated with is on good type of time. I yeah. think sometimes it's like. I use the example of the dude who owns the SOE complex. I think it's sometimes the older adult producers who are already established. Maybe they already have been doing this music for a long time. They make tons of money on their studio. I think they have that superiority complex yeah. as opposed to the people that you're working with. We're some at different levels than others, but we're all trying to prop each other up for the yeah. sake of Boston, we're for the sake of the music and shit. It. We're not, you know, we're not dickheads. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I feel that. At a hundred percent, definitely too, because I feel like the way some of them look like it, if they've been in the game for like 20, 30 years, they're like, Oh, if you're not like, I don't know, just the biggest artist, if you're not Kanye, like, exactly, yeah, why? Like, but I don't know, like, we know what we're about, <laughs> we know what we're about, but we're gonna get into you a little bit, Jack Mac. How'd you get into making beats? So, I think I'd ask for this like APK mini, like. The 25 key thing that every producer's had, but um, I asked for that for my birthday because I was watching, like, internet money videos, and, yeah, pretty much I got one for my birthday, and I was just, like, hooked right away. Like, I would just, like, make beats every day, pretty much, and... What year was that? That was 2017, February, and, so yeah, like four years ago. so, like, ever since that day, like, I was just, like, it's been, like, all I fucking do, pretty much, like, Damn. my main, like... I don't know, thing. So, yeah, I did that. And then in school, I was, like, always watching the internet money tutorials, like the Nick Mirror and shit. That's what like, Sully was doing, too. Yeah, like, really, constantly. Everyone does that shit. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, they, like, taught me everything. Like, shout out to them. Like, bro, internet money's the shit, but. Internet money literally, like, created, like. For real. Like. The past three years worth of producers, for I real. feel like. No mm -hmm. bullshit. Everyone watching the tutorials. Yeah. So, what? What artists, like, or not artists, producers, what producers did you look up to early on? Obviously, besides Nick Mira, Taz Taylor. Definitely Mira. So, Side Piece, he's another one from uh, Internet Money. A guy, Pharaoh Vice from Internet Money. Um, I'm trying to think, like, I don't think I knew, like, much about producers or even, like, any of that, like, stuff, like, the culture back then at all. But um, I'm trying to think, honestly. Really don't. Ha, ha, has a, <laughs> Not has, many. Has Akachi inspired you more recently? Or oh like? yeah, like a ton, like very much so. Like Akachi's crazy. I feel like any producer he comes into contact with just gets motivated as well. Oh fuck. yeah, it's like yeah. literally like. Mm -hmm. Shout out Ben too. Since yeah, we're talking no, about Akachi, shout out Ben and shout out John. Them. Shout out the whole gang. Shout out Sully. Um, <laughs> shout out Sully too. Trent said a shit bitch. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got a cast, bitch. Huh? I got like an arsenal, like a cast of characters that y'all be rocking with. That's crazy. We do, bro. bro. I forget. I was talking about it with Tempo. Tempo's like, bro, do you realize like everyone's like their own character? Like, Doctrine's a human dictionary. I'm the little kid that's just good at music. So he's like the little white boy making the music. Yeah, that's I'm hilarious. Like, bro, I'm like, it's right. like a movie. Like, yeah, because also, like, what I love about doing all the vlogs, pictures, and shit, it's like we're capturing everyone's growth. So you're seeing, like, the evolution. And it's going to be like when everyone's up, it's going to be so dope to look yeah, back for sure. at everything. I love that you document it how you do it. Yeah, like, I, just love, videos. I love documenting shit. I love documenting shit. Um, but get more on you. What other artists have you worked with besides Doctrine? Oh, uh, just a few local artists. Few local Honestly, artists. not too many people. People from Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I'm working with a guy named Jai Jams right now. Shout out Jai. Um, yeah, not too many people. Not too many honest. people, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's really been big focus on the beats, just getting them as good as I can. You got to start sending them beats out, bro. Your yeah. beats are fire. I know, I know damn fire. well my guy's about to do something game-changing soon. Sure. It's coming. I, I actually did get, like, a song with, like, a major artist, but I'm not supposed to, like, talk about it nah. yet. It was with Akachi. Yeah. Yeah. That's fire. Fire. That's fire. Super. That's, that's, that's fire as fuck. <laughs> nah. <laughs> that's fire as fuck. Be on the lookout for that. Obviously, you can't talk about it, but that's going to be that's gonna be dope as fuck. Yeah. That's gonna be Big moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all What y'all got on the way, bro? Because I know you said you got, like, what, like, four or five? So, yeah, yeah so... When can we expect the first one? So I, I got I I didn't even think to mention this, but the one that I want to drop first is actually with Tempo on it too. So shout out to Tempo. Yeah. Like I 
had the pleasure of meeting him twice now. And fucking, fucking, obviously everyone knows, like, good kid, you know what I'm saying? Fucking Character. Immaculate vibes. I fuck with him. I want to get another one with him, but I'm, f- I'm like, I was talking with him for a minute about getting a joint with him. So, like, for months. So to have one is actually dope. And yeah. I, I made the beat. And yeah, and Shout Jack Max on the beat. Temple's a Let's beast, go. bro. He's crazy at singing. Like, <laughs> crazy. So this is about to be like, like a three-headed snake moment. You that know shit's what I'm about saying? To be fire as fuck. That shit about to be fire. Doctrine as fuck. Tempo and Jack Mac. But after that, I got I got another single joint over. At, uh, I think it was with Jack Mac and Sonic Kaboom. Um, Shout out Ben and K Sully too. And K oh, Sully on that too. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a loaded. You know, it's just crazy to have like. Just the fact that those, like, we got these producers, like, stacking up on this. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just crazy. Bro, that's the most important part of music. Like, collaboration, no, man. Bro, collaboration, but also, like, in my eyes, the producer, it depends. Because you have some artists that are equally involved. Like, they're sitting there through the process telling you what to do with the beat, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like majority of the time, bro, the producer is so much of the song like For more sure. than the artist a hundred percent and what i love about what's going on here all the producers love each other it's not no yeah like, it's real love yeah. I, feel yeah. Like, yeah I feel like most producers are just like cool with each other like, literally more than artists i feel like literally bro just, like, ev- build. very unproblematic community it's oh yeah a hundred percent bro every single time a producer comes in here it's like the most genuine energy every single time i always be telling them that i'm like bro no offense to artists, but I'd be fucking with producers more because they don't be wild. They don't. I'm not throwing shade at anyone. They don't be getting. There's no producer shit in the beef. Studio, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, there's no producer beef. There's no like getting fucking shit faced in the fucking studio. Like, fucking. I don't know. It's just like always chill vibes. Like even if whatever's going on, it's just always chill and it's always welcoming. Like it's like if there's a producer in the room over, they're not gonna be like, oh, like. Don't come in here, like, come in here, let's fucking collab, send me loops, blah, 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 let's get each other's information, like, I feel like producers, you can be in a room with, like, Akachi, for instance, any producer that comes through here, if they go in with Akachi, it's not like Akachi's like, oh, like, get out of here, like, he'll be like, yo, come in here, let's tap yeah. in, whatever, that's what I love about the producer, yeah. it's a beautiful Dude. fucking thing. For real, so there's a lot of scamming, though, like, be careful of that, <laughs> make sure you know what you're, like, getting into, for real. people. Can I record on that real quick, yeah? Huh? <coughs> Record on that camera. Um, scamming in terms of what? Can you elaborate? Like I've been scammed like a while back. Oh, like uh, I would pay for like <laughs> promo, and I, it would turn out they had like fake followers and shit. And oh yeah. Even more than that though, it's like <laughs> I was dumb back in the day. Like I would pay to get like a Twenty One Savage placement. Like I did that once. Oh, uh, you fell for one of those <laughs> scams? Yeah, dude. I was desperate. I was like so hungry, but. Yeah, the moral of the story is to too. definitely avoid Look out for scams, yeah, those bro. type of for scams real. for sure. Bro. And, and even all the producers and artists, like they just won't do your thing. Like you'll send the money and they will just won't do it. Yeah. Oh, no. I've heard of that with like loops. Yeah, for sure. Young Blue had like a scandal for that. Really? Yeah, it was a crazy thing. Young Blue. I don't even know who that is. It was like a song with Drake. Whatever. Oh, what the fuck? He's a big one, yeah. But the fuck. <laughs> um. Yo, no bullshit. If you don't mind me asking, how much did you lose on that 21 Savage thing? Oh, only like 50 bucks. Oh, Nothing that's not crazy. bad. Yeah. That would be crazy. Gonna say you like got a $50 21 it, Savage it placement. It might have been bro. 100 I forget. I thought you were going to say like 50 bands, bro. Hell I'm not 50 no. bands, like five bands or some yeah. shit. I'm going to be like, bro. Not too bad. Yeah, no, that's not that. That's not A cheap that lesson, yeah, no. but. But it could be worse is what I mean. Like, I'm just nah. winning everyone, you know? 1,000%. <laughs> So, what's it like with you guys doing um, songs in the studio? Is it like you writing or you freestyle? Because obviously, in terms of us recording, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, even outside of the four joints we got, like, it's probably like like ten shits that like we've, st- including those four. There's probably like ten different shits we've started, yeah. or yeah. like shit that's like written or whatever. But it's yeah. like not necessarily a matter of like you know finishing it or being in different places like. I had done some when I had visited Massachusetts from L.A., you know, but they didn't get completed. So I always like to be in a position where I feel comfortable to, like, punch in as many times as I need with a producer, you know, because sometimes producers, like I said, be fucking weird, and they be getting, like, sometimes annoyed if you punch in too much. Bro. Which makes no sense. Like, I mean, like, 
Like realistically, <laughs> like there's nothing you can do. Like you just yeah. and you, if you a perfectionist, you just gonna keep punching. And and I, I know for sure. Excuse me on that. I remember actually we was recording. I was here the other night. I think I was sleeping on the couch out there while. But yeah, I heard I you was recording something your verse, and it's like I kept hearing. Obviously, like like you hear anywhere, but I distinctively heard you was spitting some like hard slimy shit. And fucking, <laughs> it was like you had to keep doing it. But it's like it really be like that. And I, I can't imagine like working with an engineer who like you can't sit side by side with and be like. Gonna do it again. We gonna do it again, uh, and they just chilling. It's like it should never be no type of irritation. Uh, so like when we recording, I can freestyle because I feel comfortable enough. I can't do that with producers. I don't feel comfortable with because uh, it's like they're like, oh, you're doing it too like much. You know, long, yeah. I want to be able to be in my pocket. So it's quick to record with him. So I'm thinking that we are gonna have more in the future too. Obviously, for you know sure. what I'm saying that's what we fire. Yeah. That's what he goes fine. off nah. freestyling like for real, bro. No bullshit. If you're down, you might have to freestyle at the end of this podcast. I'd actually be down. It's been a minute. You might, you might have to. No bullshit. Not too rusty. Not, <laughs> hey, hopefully not. Nah. Hopefully not. You said slime shit though. And real quick, because I know we got two big Gunner fans. I don't know about you. I'm not really a Gunner fan. I like him. But what y'all think about DS4? I'm a Gunner fan. You guys are more up. than no, not even popping my shit. Is he th- that like like I I'll at least say this, honest to God, I've listened to D I've listened to all of Gunna's albums many 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 times, but DS4, I've listened to at least thus far since it dropped like twenty to twenty five times, cover to cover. Like it, it's it's I don't, obviously it's not daily, but like. At least a couple times a week, I'll listen to the whole album. You like, like it that much? And outside of DS4, I only listen to Gunna Music pretty much. Damn. That's like literally like my palette, which is weird because that's not even like How the type rap. of music I rap. But like literally that's Gunna. That's the GOAT. He's literally, I literally <laughs> say this to every single person I, yeah. I meet, bro. I say he's the greatest rapper of all time. <laughs> and I genuinely <laughs> mean that. Bro, he's, like, oh, he's fucking just, good. He just yeah. hits on some different shit, bro. Like, it's just different. It's crazy. Nobody does what he can do. Every single no one gets it. I, I have Except I have yet warrior. to find someone to name me a bad gunna song. I'm willing to st- I'm willing to on my mother's life. I'm willing to stand by the statement that there is not a song that gunna has released that is bad or a miss. Not one. Not one. Not one. I can't say that about any other artist. You can do research. Juice World before he died. I'm not gonna lie. I think I think DS4 is his worst like studio album. The more I listen to it, the more it grows to me. Like honestly, I agree. I, I agree with you to an extent, but it like I feel like it has its own body. Like it's its it own does. thing. It needs to sit. For, yeah, like at least eight eight more months. Listen, eight, keep, keep, more months. keep listening. You know what I'm saying? It's it's gonna hit eventually. But I don't know, like bro, because like fucking DS, what is it? Dripper Down Two. Yeah, and Wanna are like the two greatest albums like ever type shit. So I, I like I don't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can generate <laughs> you're so much younger, so like No no, no I mean but but it's, it's it's just like I I really do agree. Like obviously I fuck with other rappers too, but like it's just like my, my taste has just been for that kind of music. So are you like all all things YSL? All slime? I don't even I like Young Thug, like he's cool. I like I'd had my little stint listening to Lil Got It low keyed, but like Gunna is like like I literally listen to Gunna every day. Damn. Every What's single day. What's your top five Gunna right now? Go. Oh my That's, god. It's like literally way too hard because I yeah. literally listen to DS one, two, three, Dripper Drown, one, two, wanna, <laughs> DS four, like every single thing. They, there's like mixes on YouTube of all his unreleased shit. Yeah, his unreleased shit. Every like literally, it's it's like it's honestly pitiful. Like it's in, in the way that people be like fanboying over other artists. I'm sorry. There's just like every like I just feel like I've tapped into everything, and I hope I know for a fact that I will collab with Gunna one day. But I hope that he fucking knows that like I am responsible for so many streams. Like <laughs> I can give him thousands and thousands of streams. Bro. No bullshit. I forget what it is, but I'm pretty sure Apple. I don't know if it's if Apple does this, but I know Title. If you stream music through Title, your most streamed artist gets like a percentage of your subscription. I'm pretty sure it works like that. That's actually that. excellent. So you're probably giving fucking gonna a percentage of whatever you stream. Music I hope from. so, bro. <laughs> He's always delivering that every time. Always. Yeah. Um. 
I was about to say something off that. Oh, when you guys were saying that you feel like the album needs to grow on you. I don't know if I'm bugging, but I feel like for some reason right now, a lot of the projects that are coming out, it's like you hear it once and you got to like keep listening to it to like really like it. I don't know if I'm bugging. It depends. Nah, bro, that, yeah. It depends like, on the album. Bro, like, because even. That shit was hard from John. Bro, I, I don't even really like Whole Lot of Red like that, but it definitely, it grew on me. <laughs> And like so fire. Even like Donda, Kanye bro, did. I was like so excited so to hear fire. Kanye back. But I like at the same time it took me listening to it for like a week to be like, okay, like I love this. It was like besides like off the grid and shit. Like it took me a while to get used to it. Donda? Yeah. I don't e- I, I I don't even like Donda that much. Really? Yeah. I I like Donda. Like it's definitely not my favorite Kanye album, but I think it was pretty good. Like if you listen to it, it's like thing s- is it's like an art piece. It's, it is it's more that's, than just an album. That's what I mean. Like you gotta really listen to it front to back to fucking grasp the art concept of it, but it's just like it's two hours. That's why I haven't listened to it as much. I'd rather go cycle through my beautiful true, dark yeah. twisted Most fantasy. Most people gave it like that initial listen. And yeah, like I go back off the grid. I fuck with, but yeah. overall, I feel like most projects for some reason it's just like I need certified to lover boy was kind of mid. Bro, I didn't like. I don't like certified lover. I didn't boy. either. I don't. Yeah. Know. It felt no, so half assed. Yeah. Like, That's what Drake has been doing. Drake has been half assing everything lately. I honestly. hate it. I hate Bro, it. Every I verse, can't stand every feature, it. everything, everything. He's just. I don't know what's up with him, dude. <laughs> it just pisses, it actually thing. pisses me off. Like, he, he, come on, bro. I no bullshit. Agree. I've always liked Drake, but at the same time, I feel like it's just like I don't like the fact that it's just like Drake is just like the goat. For real, so like I, I mean, don't know. Like he I, deserved it for a while. He <laughs> deserves it, but it's also like I don't know why you have like if you're talking about goats, like there's there's multiple goats of like that generation, but it's like. You got, like, Drake obviously is good with the emotional shit, but then you got, like, Kanye. You got J. Cole, Kendrick, who obviously they don't drop as much. That's what Drake does a good job of. That's why Drake's the most fucking popping artist, because he never fucking has a year where he doesn't have a fucking album come out. But, like, everyone just gravitates towards Drake. Like, if you ask radio hits. so many people, that's facts. That's facts. Like, he definitely he's cracked the formula down, but it's like, bro, I'm just ready. Like, even, like, Kanye and shit, like, I love Kanye. Kanye's one of my biggest inspirations. Even, like, Kendrick and shit, like, I love all of them. But, like, low-key, bro, I'm just ready for, like, a new wave of artists. Like, just... Me too. I'm ready for the whole industry. And, like, I feel like that's about to happen with our generation. I want everything to just get, like, restructured. I'm tired of, like, the same old bullshit. Like, dead ass, bro. Dead ass. I think it's coming, man. I think it is. I really hope so, yeah. I think it is, bro. I'm trying to... Push that agenda. A hundred percent. I think yeah. everyone fucking everyone here is. Yeah, yeah. We all are fucking need to stop hitting this shit. But my favorite thing talking about fucking changing music, bro. I feel like you've always given a fuck about lyrics, but I feel like everyone's starting to give a fuck about lyrics again. And I fucking love it because it's not just like, ooh, perk shoot. Gang, it like, like, is, for, like, people are seeing through the world. Yeah, yeah, it's been that for so long. Yo, one other thing, I'm not going to trash people. People that do drill, right? Keep doing drill because if you do drill music right and that's your life, I fucking love that kind of music. But all the random motherfuckers that be talking about shooting people, doing all this drill shit, get the fuck off it. It's fucking corny if that's not your life. Can I give a small opinion on that? Yeah. Respect and love, like human to human, but I would I would encourage anybody, this is just me, who gives a fuck what I think. If anybody is doing drill music, regardless, any type of drill music. If you are, you need to take a look. Maybe you do not care. You probably would not if you're making that type of music. But if you are promoting in any way, shape, or form violence, you promote in guns, you promote in drug use, you promote in, I mean, like, at the end of the day, people are going to talk about foul shit. But if you go about promoting, like, just immoral, evil shit, that is exactly what you're gonna get. That's exactly what you're Stop. gonna spread. And it's and it and it is what it is. If that's what you wanna do, then that's what you wanna do. But just understand, regardless of who you are, and this is for mainstream rappers, anybody, is that you are making a decision that you are are putting a negative influence or a bad influence out into the world. There's no way to spin it in a good way unless you're talking about getting out of the struggle. Yeah. Every time you promote something and you put it in a good light, you glorify violence, you glorify drug use in a way. Obviously, people are going to smoke. Obviously, people are going to do drugs like that. But if you putting it in a way that's promoting it, you're going to get in what you, I mean, you're going to get out what you put in. And that's exactly, you're, you're going to be 
leaving that stain on you know what I'm saying? And you see Society. it happen over the years, bro. Well said. You see it happen over the years. Funny enough, I've been watching fucking mad videos about the Chicago rappers for the past week. I've been watching mad Chicago documentaries, but look at what happened to a lot of the Chicago rappers. Yeah. The shit they're putting out. Like, no, there's so no bad, place bro. for it, man. No bullshit. I feel like music is just like a large contributor of like bad shit that happens nowadays. Bro. Honestly, it is, bro. Because like, what are your guys' opinion? Because this is something I've, I've had a lot of off-camera situations about this, and I just really don't like. For the people that aren't in those situations where they got to be out there Ooh. shooting, whatever. Because the thing is, I like that music when it's authentic. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. I like that authentic shit. Why? Like, mm-hmm. Can well, I ask why? Because it's their truth, bro. Okay. But, but, all right. But, 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 as, but, as, but what about, wh- where's the differentiation between speaking the truth of what you go through and speaking about, all right, listen, and I'm not even trying to cut you off or anything because I know you said definitely not to do that. But it's like, if somebody is talking about their truth, let's say my truth is, okay, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in a bad situation where I had to do things necessarily not by legal means to make bread. And along the way, I had to step on a few people and step on a few toes, right? Let's say that that's the case. How is that the same as people talking about, I, I'm like I got this like I got this gun or I'm gonna do this to this person or like if anybody mess with me I'm gonna shoot this person or I'm 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 popping perkies and mixing it with the lean or if if a nigga try me I'm gonna pop his top or I'm spinning the block on the op or you know what I'm saying I'm fucking this bitch and then fucking her friend like you can do all these things but it's like that that may be the truth but that truth is not that's not a like a good truth to have. Oh you no, I I'm know saying? I know no. it's still not a good truth necessarily. And you're putting out and no, evil, like 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 bad energy. No, you're right. Regardless. No, that's facts. That's facts. And I 100% agree with what you're saying. I'm not saying necessarily that it's like, right. But where I come from, where I'm saying I fuck with the music, like, it's not like I'm saying like, oh, like, I know what you mean. I'm listening to this like, oh, I want to go shoot somebody right now. But like, if I'm pissed off and I go bump some hard ass drill music while I'm in the gym or some shit, or even just driving, like that shit's like therapeutic almost. Like in the in. As fucked up as it sounds, like you also work with a lot of artists who make drill too, yeah. so I understand what yeah. you say, what you say and, as well. And I, I agree with you in the sense, like I hate when like a rapper is just like saying negative, terrible, terrible yeah. thing after terrible thing. Like it's more just like if they talk about that, and that's true. Like that's true for yeah. them. Yeah, you, know, you know, that's the like, thing. It's the, it's just the energy, like he said. Like if I put that shit on when I'm like working out, that's just like a stereo literally literally you know like but my favorite talking about like all that music my favorite is definitely the people who are talking down on it in it like trying to get out that like that shit you don't like like even if it's talking about like okay like i had to fucking go walk down the block with a gun blah 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 i had to sell drugs blah 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 but they're talking about how they're trying to get out of it like they're also talking about all the downsides like like if i'm selling drugs i got these people addicted it fucking sucks like i'm ruining families like Rappers like that, those be my favorite rappers. Mm. Especially, like, just looking at all the mainstream people I listen to. For, I feel like it's people that came up from that, and they're talking down on it. But it's also just relatable, like, to an extent. Because it's talking about coming from nothing to something. But it's talking about going through, like, same way you were talking to me earlier on in the podcast about you having to deal with whatever, like, went down. Yeah. Obviously, that's not fucking violence, all this shit. But the same way, like... Me seeing, I'm trying to think of, like, the baby, for instance. This is just random. I don't even listen to the baby like that. But the baby, known for shooting, like, three people from the hood, obviously, went through whatever. (laughs) And then now you see him walking around with the big-ass chains, mad happy and shit. Like, that shit, especially as an African-American, that shit is so dope for me to fucking see. And hearing it through the music, it's like they're talking about all this shit that went down in their life. And then they're up top now. Like, they made it out. Like I I think the issue comes... To the when, glorifying. When, yes, and I think that there's a, a fine line <coughs> because rappers often do tell a story, but it's also intertwined with glorifying. And what I'll say is this, and again, this is just my opinion because, like, it's, we, like we on the podcast, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I don't dictate what anyone else agrees with. It's literally yeah. just my thought. Whether you're in the gym or whether whatever the case may be. If you are listening to music, like let's say that's glorifying that type of thing, in part or in whole, you 
are like and especially because like i am like i'm half black like and i have never interacted i've never got a chance to interact with my mother's side of the family my mother's white so the only thing i understand and the only thing i know is black culture and i understand 100 percent, maybe not 100 percent myself due to my complexion do i understand the the throes of what people go through a uh, people of color but I understand from everybody who's, t- you know what I'm saying, in my family who's telling me these things and who's educating me on these things and who's educating me on systematic racism and how it really is and stuff. As African-American people and as someone who's also black myself, when you glorify something like that, or even if it's like, oh, this is like gym music or music to get lit to, you are pushing the like the degradation and you're pushing the 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 uh the downgrade of 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 not only the black culture but also just like humankind like that's literally how it is and you can ask any per and i'm not just saying this this is not just on me if you ask like like i can speak to my grandfathers and my uncles and you know what i'm saying the people who understand who may have maybe have even been able to orate experiences of them seeing racism in like a real raw raw sense earlier you know what i'm saying in 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 american history you feel what i'm saying so having those firsthand things you ask somebody do you do you think that these older grown black men who are well who have seen both sides are sitting and listening to this type of music pr- promoting this type of stuff it's not them who are yeah. listening to it the adults are usually the ones who are like this is and that's not just white it's it's, it's i used all to adults. i used to say to my dad like oh like if you're not listening to rap music like aren't you kind of turning your back on like your black culture but he told me i'm not turning my black uh, my back on the black culture i'm turning my back on the stupidness and the, and the stupidity yeah. and the foolishness that they're trying to bring to it you feel what i'm saying because it's not just and i'm not even trying to get too deep on this but systematically they the 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 people who are in charge of promoting music and the people who are in charge of pushing things and i'm not saying this like i am in in inner workings but just when you look at historically you look at music videos from the 70s the 80s the 90s and the rise of hip-hop and today how artists are funneled how do artists get the biggest most most like biggest traction today answer this question first and foremost it's off of who chooses like on spotify itunes youtube and whatever it's what playlisting and it's who gets on the trending pages and who's promoted whose pictures on there whose ads they're running all those things right now who do they choose to run on these ads right back in the day and it's way more blatant back in the day if you see it they want the black man to look like well, let's take it from like the 80s or the 90s right it's the stereotypical black guy. He got the he got the girl. He got the big gold chain. That's what the, the it's not a promotion of the image just to say, "Oh, this is like this is the way that's cool." The people who are making all this money off these artists are not sitting there like with huge big gold chains, with fucking 40-inch yeah. rims bouncing on it with big bad uh fucking big booty bitches like these are like us like People who are in a position, they're not looking up to these people. Like, do you think the people who are above the baby or the people who are above like Lil Durk and stuff are looking at Lil Durk or they're looking at um the baby? Like, okay, like this guy is like he's the type of human like we need to look to to this or this or they're looking at him like a cash cow because they know that that type of shit is going to get people riled up and what does it also do it makes black people and it makes the black culture look it it, it takes away the wind from their sails when you see oh all, all these rappers are talking about this shit or all these rappers are talking about that shit it's not just so that like oh this is what's actually lit or this is what's actually good in life, we really need chains. We really need mad bitches. We really need to pop perkies. No, any any good per- sane person knows that that's not the way to like living like the most fulfilling life. That's not what it is. But why do they promote it like it is? Because one, it makes black people look foolish like they've been trying to do. That's part of the racism that they're doing against black people systematically is trying to make them look more foolish, look in a worse position, not doing intelligent type things, trying to promote killing each other you talk about chicago rappers dying these cities where there's high crime rates and the music is promoting this and then this drill rappers dying and then this drill rappers dying right that anybody knows that that's foolishness that's idiocy they lost their one human life over the type of shit that they promoted and that has been being promoted in the type of music for for no good purpose 
we need to, and you're saying as an African American, we need to move. Like, I'm not saying that there's like we, there's going to be nobody. Like, everyone should stop talking about any drill things. That's not realistic. But you need to realize and call a spade a spade and see what it is that they're trying to do against us. And that racism is not always just overt. It's that it's systematic as well. And it also is in making them trying to look foolish by promoting stuff that everyone knows in their good mind is just unproductive. Getting involved in gang stuff, if, they, if, you don't, if you're not about that, or staying involved in that, p- pushing drugs, getting people addicted. We know it sounds cool, but we know that that shit is fucking, if, we, if it wasn't wrapped about, and it was just some dude that you knew from your neighborhood, the local trailer park guy, Jim, who he just he just told you stories about how he would rob dudes and he just is, is, is selling like crack to people. You know what I'm saying? Would you look up to that dude and be like, yo, this dude is so lit. You're like, nah, this dude's like scummy. This dude's like a bum. Like he's promoting bad shit. Uh, but suddenly when you're rapping about it, yo, this this nigga's hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's he, he spit these bars in this. But you got to look at what it is. And either you're going to be on the side that's pushing things the wrong way or you're going to be on the side that's pushing things the right way. And it's I'm not saying anybody has to make no decisions, but it's like you're going to be on one side or the other. you either going to promote it or you're not going to promote it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Either you're going to be about that type of shit or you're not going to be about that type of shit. If you really believe that that's poisonous, you're not going to, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to sit in the poison and be like, oh yeah, this this poison's okay. Right. You're going to be like, no, we need to like not do that type of shit and stop making, stop letting them make us look like we're foolish and all we can do is just I'll be on this type of shit. Like Kanye West said the same shit that I'm trying to say. Literally him talking about like, I'm not going to the extent of this because it's not my place. But when he explained his like slavery is a choice comments, yeah. he was explaining that he wants to separate himself from the mentality that like things have to be a certain way and things have yeah, to no, be in this no, lesser no. place that you can elevate yourself above that type of shit. And now Kanye West is like a $10 billion man. And he's not talking about no, he's not spinning blocks and shit. You feel what I'm saying? Literally. And he never, he's a businessman. He never even talked about this shit. He talked about fucking loving clothes and art and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Like, he talked yeah. about all that shit. I know yeah, I kind of went off on a lot. But no, no, you went on a, a really tangent. good point. Bro, that was a really good point. Because yeah. I never thought about that systematic racism shit you were saying. Because I remember I used to always like, have conversations with my dad, like, when my teachers and shit were fucking with me in school, he's like, don't do this shit because you're just like feeding in the stereotypes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, now that I'm thinking about it, looking at the whole shit when you were talking about the higher ups, like the suits doing shit, it's like, bro, realistically, if you think about it, if that's the music that they're promoting, they're constantly picking these violent ass artists, that is what they might be trying to do. It's addicting. Like, okay, because think about it, besides like Drake, besides Kanye, like there's not a lot of artists you have even drake talks about shit like that to an extent but like there's not a lot of artists that you've heard blow up it's not gonna be African always American. right in your face that. like yeah like you made a good point with that yeah, you made a you made a good point with that that i n- never really thought about i kind of want to elaborate on that like just to anyone listening like when you're listening to music like try to listen with a filter because it's like as long as there's lyrics playing in your head it's sub it's like programming your subconscious yes. and like just try to be conscious of that because like it's not if just it's fucking people up like uh, big time damn I'd what do you say. what do you mean by that you're talking about how like music affects mood and stuff like like mm. it's just you're it's you remember the lyrics and like you you say there's like a happy beat and they're talking about like fucked up stuff you're gonna like it's going to associate in your brain with, like, good things, but, like, they're saying terrible things. <laughs> and it's, like, you remember the lyrics even if you, like, don't. Right. Like, you'll just go around uh, walking, just like, it sounds fuck good. that, like, and, and, and just saying crazy shit in your head. But and, like, even the, like, the human brain is so powerful that it's, like, even when we don't literally, like, I think what you're saying also is, like, even if you don't literally, like, remember the lyrics, like, you can say them back. Yeah. Your brain is like a sponge, and anything you've ever heard or anything, like, it's somewhere in your mind. It's just not always accessible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you listen to that type of music, even if you think, oh, I'm just listening to it at the gym just to pump me up. I'm not saying to you, but yeah. anything. Oh, I'm just, I'm just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just listening to it in the background, or I was just at a party. I'm just at the club. Your mind is listening to those things and your mind is absorbing those things that's being heard. And 
no matter what, like it's not even like a like an opinion. Like psychologically, scientifically, biologically, you are gonna be influenced in some way. Sh- even if it's it, like infinitesimally small, yeah. your brain hears those words. It's not just. It never goes just in one ear and out the other. You're yeah. absorbing everything they're saying. Every gun, every gun reference, everything, every perky thing. You may not do it, but your mind remembers yeah. that, and that's in your vernacular now. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Look, for real, look no, at I, be- I believe Psych- it. I believe bro. it, bro. I that's heard crazy. this quote. It was like songs are like melodic spells, and you're just like, uh, what's it? like I'm trying? I can't think of the that's word. You're just subject to whatever they're fucking saying. They're just oh. writing that in. That makes no, sense. literally, yeah. literally. And that's not even that's too crazy. deep. Like that's just literally like science. That's how it works. That's fucking nuts, bro. Yeah. That's nuts. That's why we need to change this. Bro. Make it more positive. Literally. Fuck it can be like church, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start rapping about church. Nah, <laughs> we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't turning this in there. <laughs> yeah, we ain't turning this in there. Don't have to be that. <laughs> but we'll do, oh, we got to do something. We got to do something. We got to get on to something. You don't, it, it no, nothing positive ever has to be uncool. Like, it, like, we don't have to be like rapping, like, hey, everybody, we're doing positive shit. Like, literally, it's so easy. Like, just make music that doesn't talk about negative, like, violent shit. It's, it's not like you can't make music about, you can't talk about girls, you can't talk about your struggle, you can't talk about anything. It's like, just wouldn't it be still very easy to make a song that's not about <clears throat> guns drugs or like debauchery like yeah. is, is there a, like is that impossible are those the only three things to talk no, about obviously money not. drugs obviously and, and guns and women that's There's so it? much more to life obviously <laughs> it's just a, like it's, it's ridiculous yeah. i don't know those are what you see in the movies so i guess that's what people are trying to see in the music gotta just break the cycle it. bro for real got to. who knows the fucking illuminati or whoever the fuck Nah, it's, it's us. We we control our destiny. We gonna do this shit. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. Sir. <laughs> no bullshit. I forget. I was about to say something because that camera just died, and that probably means that one's gonna die soon too. So I was gonna say one more thing. Oh, to wrap it up, I was gonna say something after. But earlier you said something about when you got your cat. Um, <laughs> There's a conversation we had about animals that I'm not sure if you want to talk about, but I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but if you want to share that conversation we had on the way up to Charlton, what, I think that would what, be what was the What was the conversation? You don't remember we were talking about? You and Ken were talking about animals and what made you guys start perceiving animals differently. Oh, like psychedelics? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. So... I I don't know, maybe you've even had the same experience as well, but I know for myself that, um, like, through through psychedelic experience, I just... Talk to trees. I I, I realized (laughs) that, like, like, we're, like, when you look day to day of living things, we pretty much only see, like, besides bugs we only see pretty much humans, right? Like, obviously, like, we see dogs and cats, but, like, the very few, like, steps into, like, the animal world of being able to connect with a completely different species comes in, like, cats, dogs, like, bunnies, birds, everything, right? That is, like, for me, I came to the realization that is just incredible, and, like, that is not something that I could overlook. That's, like, overlooking, like, nature. That's, like, uh, overlooking, like, how beautiful nature is or, like, going to the beach or something. It's, like, but it's even better because they're alive. Like, th- th- imagine, like, the cutest, most adorable. And I, I don't give a fuck. Like, there, I don't think there's any toughness to fucking not thinking animals are cute. Like, uh, that you're just, that's some dumb shit. Fucking, you take the cutest, most adorable, like, stuffed animal. And you can literally, like, cats are so fucking cute, bro. Like, you take a cat, like, it looks like a stuffed animal, but it's living. Like, it's breathing. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's just, like, I don't know. And between that and dogs, like, they're their own caliber of shit. It's like, there's, like, nothing in the human experience besides, like, a stuffed animal that you can fuck with that even remotely comes close to the experience that you can have with an animal. It's like... And and psychedelics help me realize that, like, that's a whole nother spirit, a whole nother energy. Like, how could someone not like that? 
and they're just like they're so much fucking cuter than humans they're way less pro- pro- problematic yeah. like yeah they do dumb shit but like a cat is is not going to complain they're not going to be a rude friend they're not going to be a stubborn friend they're not going to like fucking talk shit to you like it's just they're a cat or a dog is just going to be a dog like it's just like it's so much better like i would rather honestly if i had a choice between like just like interacting with like the average person or just staying like with my cat like and my girlfriend like that is like that's that's all i need okay. the cat doesn't it's, it's just it's just it's like perfect honestly huh. and they're just so fucking cute dude uh, yeah i feel the same way with my dog kind of well, just chill. But like, some animals be problems. annoying as shit with it. But but, yeah. but but why do you think they're annoying? They're just like humans in the way that if a, a, an animal is going to be as annoying as it's brought up to be. Like if you train an animal, if you bring an animal up in a bad spot, it's going to be a certain way. If you tr- raise an animal to be like good and you treat it good, like very few animals. Like when was the last time that you really like, if you've been to like mad friends who have animals like, I interact with, I, I feel like, a lot of animals through my friends. When was the last time you really, like, had an interaction with an animal that was, like, fucking, like, horrible? And is that the MO? Is that, like, the usual type shit? Or is it usually, like, maybe this, like, yeah, this dog barks a lot. Or this cat, like, is, like, it doesn't let you pet it. But, like, it's not, like, a, a, a kid who's, like, right. it's whining 24-7. The kid is, like, n- you need to tend to it every few seconds. Like, some some cats and dogs like they're not the most social dogs and type shit but it's like they're not like intolerable you feel what i'm saying it's rare that a, that an animal is just like so unbearable that it's like yo these animals are crazy i feel like that's what people see but you know you you spend time in any pet store with anybody's pet like most pets are going to be calm relaxed unless they don't know you cuz that's yeah. just like a human you know what i mean yeah. oh that's facts except like no offense i have like three friends that have like dogs that literally have like mental problems oh and yeah they just like run into the wall and shit <laughs> and just like there's those yeah there's those those, those dogs because like i humans, bro i got yeah. attacked by a pit bull when i was younger oh. no bullshit i was like probably like eight nine and i feel bad bro but this is also because i used to be terrified but also looking back at it now that i'm older and able to process it i'm like okay like every dog's not like that and i'm not terrified of dogs yes but this dog bit like two or three people same like days leading up to it biting me then this shit bit me its teeth dragged in the back of my arm like i got fucked up by that thing that shit jumped on top of me and attacked me um and they ended up having to put the dog down because after it bit me it bit another person so this motherfucker bit like four or five people then it's just a bad oh. dog <laughs> yeah but i was like because i love dogs before that um but literally there was like a mental block in my brain from whatever that i didn't even know i liked dogs because i was like traumatized for like 10 years bro like until i was like 16 17 years old bro i swear to god if if i was at your house like even my friends now sometimes i'd be making my friends i'm like yo get that shit away from me like lock it up but they always are trying like oh like be friendly with the dog and like whenever i sit there and i'll just pet a dog i'm like dogs are a bit much animals that's why i like that's why i got a cat because like i think cats are like a good balance because they're not like crazy I'm weird. I'll, I'll rather get like a lizard. I used to have. Oh God, I used to oh have. God, I want a snake. Bro, I, I fuck snakes. I fucking. Uh, my you, grandfather was terrified of snakes. Hug and he a, passed that. Can't hug that. a snake. <laughs> yeah, like. Hug but you. I think you it's can't like snuggle with like a snake. It's just, just climbing bro, around you and shit. No bullshit. You know what I'm That's sick as fuck. Bro, when I'm rich, I'm gonna get a chinchilla. I'm dead ass. Those are cool. Those shits are cool, but they be throwing the shit. They throw the shit. What is it? Huh? Chinchilla, like the little furry shit. Yeah, oh. it's like a monkey. Yeah, bro, my cousins things. in Cape Verde got monkeys in their house. That's fucking That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I actually yeah. really want a monkey one bro. day. So does my mom. Except for I'm that. Gonna like, get one. Them shits be throwing shit. Like, that's just shit. Like, it. Yeah, all that nasty shit, bro, and animals like an extra baby. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I like animals. I, th- I think there's things you got to overlook yeah. in some ways. But it's like, you got one life to live. Like, you should fucking... Like oh, appreciate the go. creations that are on this earth. You no, know? Oh, yeah. I gotta go to the aquarium. I fuck with the aquarium. <laughs> I fuck with the aquarium. You gotta meet and my listen. cat, bro. I do gotta. You should meet cat. my cat. Bring the cat. I've heard about dude. the cat. Dude, so much. no, I Ken really will, fucking should. Ken will freak out if Why? Ken's watching this. Why? Ken's allergic to cats and dogs. Like, bro, someone. I think it was, someone well, I mean, Geo's cool with. I think it was Zone. Shout out Zone. I used bro, to be allergic to cats. Bro, he brought a dog in the studio, and Ken walked in. He's like. 
why the fuck is there a dog in here? And he was, like, struggling to breathe and shit. So, like, we're always, like... I'll, I'll bring my cat on the day that <laughs> Ken is in here. <laughs> Don't let him know. You guys will fucking love this guy. I'm telling Bro. you, he's fucking awesome. I mess with cats. Bro, if if your cat's chill. chill, then you did a really good job. He's His cats chill. are, like... Uh, like the epitome of how you raise it. He lets you, like, just, like, just pick him up. Uh, he's a stuffed so animal. He doesn't go out and kill animals, right? He's one, He's purely in. Okay. Like, he's okay. the cleanest cat you'll see. Like you gotta see him. He's like angelic. I gotta see. I, I gotta love see this him. guy. I gotta. He's see my him. pride and joy, bro. Whenever I think of cats, I think of you. You remember Slee from LA? Yeah. Bro, he has a cat named Juicebox, and this thing just kills animals and brings it to his house. So cat, the <laughs> friend that I'm staying with right now, he has a cat who's also like super cute, but. Her whole like mo is like killing animals like, viciously <laughs> and shit, yeah. and cats be vicious. See, about. like cats just look evil. Like, I need yeah, that. and like some of them, some of them look cute. I bet yours looks cute, but some some cats be like on demon time. Bro. That's a fact. <laughs> my cat definitely my is on the demon time. Always. <laughs> he goes outside and he just kills the nearest thing. Bro. Doesn't even always fully kill That's your it. cat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm allergic Christ. to him now, which sucks. I like Damn. developed a that fucking sucks. That sucks. Damn. But <laughs> on a wrap-up note, yo, one last thing. Goals and aspirations both of you guys got. What can we expect this year? What are some big things you guys want to do? This year, you'll see a big song from me, like, or at least with a big artist. And I just want to grow. Just, like, work with as many people as I can. Like, work with you guys, go up with you guys. Not All too right. much. Like, I just want to grow my, like, social media posts yeah. and stuff, especially YouTube. That's going to be a big Subscribe one. Subscribe to my YouTube. That's going to be a big one. It's the doctrine. I want to, I'm going to do a full resurrection of everything that I had stopped doing before. I'm going to increase my socials. I'm going to drop songs with Jack Mac. Honestly, I guess this could be, like, the first, like, announcement that I'll make, like, out loud for people. But I will drop. Should I even give him, like, should I just tell him the name of the song? Yeah. Fucking, I want to drop the song that I have with 10 Tempo, which is called Light Skin Psychic. And I want to do that, like, honestly, like, within the next week or two. Like, I want to give you guys this content before I turn 20 years old, which is on February 13th. So the socials are going to increase. Um, I'm going to make sure I put billboards in maybe not every state, but all over the country to promote this new song 100%. I'm going to make sure I put, I'm going to funnel my my time, my money, my energy into advertisements, making sure this shit gets analytically on point. And I just, like I said, I want to resurrect what I had before. And for anyone who's fucking with me, I want to make sure, like, this is like, this is my rise to the top. Like, this is the time. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yes, sir. I've been through a lot and I'm ready to teach and I'm ready to, to grow. Ready to bounce sir. back, yo. One ready. more thing. I'm also going to drop a song soon. Ooh, like, I I me as the artist. <laughs> I heard you at the release the other day, bro. I forget who. Someone was like, yo, you want to hear Archie? Jack Max? Yeah, it was Archie. Yeah. It was the Archie. And I was one, like, like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? You fuck like, with it? Yes, I fucked with it. I was like, what the fuck, bro? Who knew I mean, Jack Max was Jack. rapping and singing, bro. too? Yo, yeah, Jack. I'm excited. I actually love that so much. Like, bro, that almost shit Almost more was than dope. producing. Like, together, it's just like... I love if it. you can learn, and, well, you already have, bro. You could do both, bro. Those are the best artists. I don't know what you just took. I just grabbed. Nah, I have some chapstick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you meant like I'm like stealing your <laughs> nah, shit. Nah, I don't yeah. know what. Nah, you just like picked something <laughs> up. Like I'm just like, take nah, this Rubik's like cube, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were taking anything. I was just like, you did that so weird. But no, nah, if you could learn to do both, bro, those are the best artists. I always be saying that. Like, if you can learn how to engineer yourself and fucking produce. It's like a superpower. Literally. <laughs> literally. That's like, look at every single, like, legendary artist. I bet you they do a bit. Kanye. Kanye, like, Travis. Like, Drake. J. Cole. Like, That's facts. The yeah. list goes on. The list goes on. But deadass, I don't know why I said deadass. I say that <laughs> a lot. But make sure, follow Doctrine, follow Jack Mac, tune in, Light Skin Psychic, on the way, featuring 10 Tempo, and Resurrection from Doctrine, and Jack Mac. Got a lot on the way. But anything else you guys want to say before we wrap it up? Thank you for having us, Thank sir. Thank you for having yeah. me, man. It's a pleasure. No problem. No problem. First you guys will be you. you guys will be back in some some capacity. Yes, sir. Probably film up. K Sully on the beat. Always yes. fucking murder yes, shit. Let's look. Hello, Get it. Like, uh, yes, you cool. over don't, but I can never speak on that. I speak on facts, only talking when I speak it back. They like why you white, but you speaking black. Like why you so young, but you speak